What's up guys, welcome back to the Neon Arcade for another Cyberpunk 2077 video. Today we're going to be talking about the 5 things that Cyberpunk can approve upon from CD Projekt Red's last major project, The Witcher 3. Just to be clear, the 5 things mentioned in this video aren't highlighted because The Witcher 3 did them poorly or to a mediocre standard. In fact, The Witcher 3 is a masterful game and I absolutely adore the design, immersion, and the world of The Witcher and The Witcher 3 as a whole. Ignoring blind nostalgia, The Witcher 3 is one of my favorites, if not my favorite game of all time. With that being said, these are the points I think Cyberpunk 2077 can take to the next level and can improve upon going forward. Putting even the very best games under the microscope is how we help developers up the ante with every new release and discussions like this help in always looking for ways to define and refine new and old mechanics, engaging gameplay, and meaningful storytelling. Starting off the list as something Cyberpunk 2077 can improve upon from The Witcher is the main story. The Witcher 3's biggest strength is arguably its secondary quests, contracts, and world development through exploration. Whilst this makes the world of The Witcher feel immensely diverse and each side story has varying degrees of impact, the main quest didn't quite feel up to par. The story suffered from some pacing issues with the rush acts after the skirmish with the Wild Hunt at Kaer Morhen and overall didn't incite much of an emotional response. The quest regarding Dandelion also took a much larger chunk than what it should have relative to the rest of the main quest and the search for Ciri could arguably be chalked up to a glorified Super Mario plotline with Princess Peach being in another castle. This could have been time aptly devoted to developing the Wild Hunt to a degree where we truly understood their motives and their backstory. Now the main story was good but wasn't as exceptional as the other things in the game that developed branching narratives as well as the world including the DLC and aforementioned side quests and activities. In this sense, Cyberpunk 2077 can convey a more gripping, emotional, and brutal main story arc. There can be heavier decisions, more punch to the gut like moments, and better developed relationships with comrades and acquaintances throughout the world of Night City regardless of how fragmented it is. It helps that V is largely learning a lot about the business and isn't as established in her mercenary role as Geralt was in his Witcher role and this gives more breathing room for potential mistakes V makes to have consequences that ripple throughout the story as a whole. I'd like to see how corporations and the most powerful yet fucked up people got to be the way that they are. What did the world take away from them? What are their triggers? Even if they have no cybernetics fused to their bodies, to what degree are they still human? What is there left to latch onto other than greed, power, bloodlust, and savagery? Next is the combat and the controls. Now initially when I played The Witcher 3, I thought the combat was terribly flawed. In actuality, you just need to properly acclimatize to its mechanics and it's most likely not going to happen even approaching the 10 or even 20 hour mark, especially for people who aren't used to third person games. Now the combat isn't perfect with Quen being vastly superior to other abilities in 90% of encounters and similar rinse and repeat methods of having to use telegraphed approaches to fights but it still feels powerful, satisfying and athletic. Whilst the combat does take some getting used to and I can see why people assume it's a weak spot, I think its true weakness lies in the fluidity and responsiveness of the controls. There will be times where Geralt is more reminiscent of the White Swan than the White Wolf as he twirls around in a bloody gust of guts and silver, and other times where he gets stun locked, caught on environments, and unable to do multiple actions like queue up Quen and sidestep an attack at the same time through no fault of your own. The responsiveness and optimization of the controls make movement feel a little too lethargic. Even Roach seems to take turns at inopportune moments and take a few clicks of the spurs to get running. Now this is playing on the PC, so it might actually be a non-issue for controller users. There also isn't a terrible amount of diversity in the weaponry of the Witcher. Yes, you have your steel and silver swords, but you also don't have a sidearm that's worth using half the time, let alone any other meaningful choices in your arsenal. I understand this is bound by the lore and the world of the Witcher, but combat never grows and adds anything substantial past upping your skill trees and learning new moves, and you start to experience diminishing returns with the gameplay. This is where Cyberpunk 2077 can offer varying methods of combat and a fluidity of gameplay with proper optimization as well as integration of reflex boosters, cyberware, and the myriad of weapons to increase replayability. Another sore spot is the animations. There were times in The Witcher 3 where I sprouted a slight grin on my face at the absurdly awkward looking animations that were present in the game. Now most were actually conveyed in cutscenes, with punches looking like characters were playing with sock and boppers, 
and running animations like CD Projekt Red had Teletubbies as their motion capture actors. Facial animations were hit or miss, with some being very expressive and emotive, and others looking like they have just been hit on the head with a mallet and didn't even know what eon they were in. Improvements to this can absolutely happen. Mirror shades and other cyber optics can disguise the eyes and thus emotion, and you may not understand the intentions of someone hiding behind them. Other facial augmentations can cover areas used for deciphering body language, whilst fashion wear can be used to accentuate body language. There is a ton of possibility here. Mouth movements are more cut and clean with Red Engine 4, the characters seem more fluid in their movements, and there seems to be weight to everything that they do. There are unique animations for every cyberware install, and Dr. Victor coasts around and scuttles about on his rolling chair just as a dentist or doctor would do if he needed to traverse the operating room for some tools. It all looks very grounded and realistic. Looting and obtaining new weapons and armors only to learn that you couldn't use them because they were 20 levels higher than you, or picking up a new sword but it being useless because they were 10 levels under you is something that bothered a lot of people. Loot level adjustments would bring more diversity in this department. This combined with the fact that the menu system was a tad clunky makes for looting to take a backseat within the game. Now with Cyberpunk 2077, not only will we have the potential to have loot that scales and thus we can use all the cool things we encounter, but people are going to gravitate towards certain types of weapons. Some will enjoy smart weapons, whilst others will enjoy a more visceral experience and will lean towards more standard weapons. Some will enjoy SMGs, whilst others will use shotguns or katanas. Some will rely heavily on reflex boosters and being a cyber ninja, and some will rely on being a tankier character with a big corporate rifle and linear frame. All of these choices originate from loot diversity and having the loot scale with your character so you can use it as soon as possible. Finally, we have no loading screens and releasing a product with less bugs. Loading screens in The Witcher 3 weren't a monumentally big deal, but they were long enough and frequent enough to strip you of immersion whilst traveling from one region to the other. No loading screens in Cyberpunk 2077 combined with the first person perspective will really ground the experience in reality and put more emphasis on developing and fleshing out a world that seems real. The Witcher 3 does this excellently with loading screens, so imagine how much more immersion and depth we can achieve with the seamlessly interconnected world of Night City. Bugs were also something that put a slight damper on the experience that was The Witcher 3. Lots were involving your trusty steed Roach, but there were also times where you are stuck in screens or tangled on some environmental texture and unable to move. Now a big open world experience is bound to have bugs, but I hope it's a significant focus on release day. Now they can be frustrating, and while we know it will happen, I'm hoping the frequency of bugs and glitches is alleviated through either developer focus or proper infrastructure and assets implemented in correcting them. That's it for me guys, thank you so much for the support so far in the videos, we've gained a lot of community members over the span of the last couple weeks. Remember we have the 2077 subscriber giveaway, where I'll be giving away a copy of the game at 2077 subscribers, so make sure you're commenting, sharing to your favorite social medias if you like the content and want to grow the community, and I'll see you guys in the next video.